Let's begin with some key economic indicators. Some revised data released this morning shows the U.S. economy grew in the third quarter. According to the Bureau of Economic Analysis, gross domestic product increased at an annual rate of 2.9% in the third quarter. The rebound comes after six months of decline and looming fears of a recession. Here now to give us an idea of what these numbers mean is Lori Bettinger. She's the president of Bank Alliance, which is a network of community banks. Lori is also the former director of the Troubled Asset Relief Program at the Treasury Department, a.k.a. TARP. Lori, good to have you. Good morning. So what's your take on this uh, data that shows that the economy is strong? You know, I think it's a morning of some good economic news. We saw a slight revision in GDP, as you mentioned. I think the initial estimate came in at growth of about 2.6%. And this morning, they've revised it up to 2.9%, in part driven by consumer spending, which we talk about so much as being just one of the engines of our economy. Um, they said that, you know, consumer spending was up a little bit more than they expected or, you know, initially estimated. Um, also, exports were up more, which, you know, the GDP really looks at the trade balance, like how much we sell abroad versus how much we buy from other countries. And, you know, in this case, we're selling more. So we're exporting more and imports. The amount that we're purchasing, which we knew was down in this most recent quarter, turns out imports fell by even more than we thought. So I think, you know, this this is good news, even though, you know, there's certainly factors in here that can change, you know, quarter to quarter. But it is good to see particularly consumer spending staying strong. I wonder how good news, how good of the news is. I'm sorry, my mm -hmm. grammar's all over the place today. Because, you know, part of the reason why we're seeing such inflation is because, and I've said this before, we keep shopping. Mm -hmm. So despite the fact that the prices keep going up, we keep spending our money. And so interest rates, rates go up. Mm -hmm. And because interest rates go up, we see the ha the housing market take a, take a bit of a slump because houses are just more expensive to buy. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just wondering, you know, on the scale of good news, as rosy as it sounds, how good is it? It's a great question. And I feel like these days we can never just sort of celebrate something as good news, stop, you know, go home. There's always a but, as you say, you know, mm -hmm. for example, if we have a great jobs report, then everyone's happy about that. It's great for, you know, people looking for jobs or currently in jobs. But then we know that that might, as you say, lead to sort of wages going up, which means more inflation, which means the Fed raises interest rates, which has all of the effects you just mentioned. So right now, I think you mentioned, you know, a silver lining mm -hmm. earlier. Everything Thing, you know, has a silver lining, but has to be taken with sort of a moment of what's next, what's around the corner, and what does that mean? And we have so many of those topics right now. I mean, I think we saw a little bit of improvement in inflation in Europe, which is great to see, but we have all of these things coming up. We have, you know, jobs, I think job opening information coming out. Um, and, you know, um, Chairman Powell is going to be speaking later today. And then, of course, we have this railroad strike, which everyone is talking about again. So as you point out, there's so many factors right now. You know, I think you can sort of celebrate a little bit of good, but you have to keep an eye on what's coming next. The Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell is set to speak today at the Brookings Institution. Uh, what are we expecting to hear? Well, I think that, that's an, another great question. And my uh, my opinion is that he's going to continue to reiterate that the Fed is completely committed to fighting inflation and will take whatever steps necessary to do that, even if it's painful for the economy in the mm -hmm. short or medium term, you know, even if it's painful for the labor market. I mean, I think that the so many policymakers have been really consistent that they are going to do whatever they need to do to fight inflation. And, you know, everyone's always looking for sort of, okay, is there a but? But we'll stop at this point. You know, maybe we'll hear a little bit of easing. I think people are hoping, right, that perhaps interest rates won't be raised by quite as much in next month in December. But I would expect him to stay pretty committed to the message we've been hearing for months now. Yeah, he has said basically it's going to hurt before it stops hurting. Yeah. Um, but you you brought up something uh, just about whether or not we'll see the same type of interest rate hike. You know, yesterday we were talking, Vlad, about uh, consumer confidence taking a bit of a dip, yeah. which I perhaps means that people might be buying less in the future. And I wonder if, what are the indications, and I guess a little bit with fingers crossed, that perhaps the Federal Reserve may, instead of going 75 basis points, maybe going, you know, half, half a point. All right. I think that they're looking for, as you mentioned, like a little bit of a dip. You know, everyone would like, you know, for things to not sort of crater. But we talk about this slowdown, the soft landing, whatever term you want to use. If you have consumer confidence, perhaps slow, but, you know, just gradually and people pull back slightly on their spending, you know, those are good things. Those sort of help. 
um, people n stop raising prices, right? Because when you sort of have this supply demand mismatch, you know, companies are going to keep raising prices. Um, I think if our next inflation reading is coming in a, in a couple of weeks, I think if we continue to see a slowing in inflation, those would all be the signs that the Fed can take some comfort that all of these interest rate increases are having their intended effect. You know, we've certainly already seen them in the housing market, but, you know, everyone's sort of looking for that, hey, as you mentioned, our consumers starting to pull back. But that said, you know, we're going into the holiday season. We're just off of, you know, Thanksgiving and Black Friday and Cyber Monday. We're hearing signs that, you know, those had really strong results. So, you know, we're going to see it still feels like consumers have pent up demand. Mm -hmm. So uh, turning now, let's to the potential rail strike. Um, you know, the president is looking for bipartisan support to try to avert it. Uh, what kind of economic impact could a work stoppage like that look like? Right. Well, I think we've heard, you know, from the White House, they've used this number of, you know, $2 billion a day could be the cost of the economy if we have a strike. And, you know, I think that they've laid out a detailed case for why they think that, you know, a strike could be catastrophic for the economy, particularly when it feels fragile. You know, we've celebrated some of these good numbers, but as, as we said, there's still a lot of stresses on the economy. And it feels like every few months when we get, you know, when we, we sort of start moving forward and seeing progress, something comes a little bit out of, you know, the blue. And, the, you know, this time we're back to the railroad strike. And I think that, you know, the administration is saying, you know, you, we can't afford this. You know, this has impacts, I think, on agriculture. You know, rails move so much across our country that they're willing to sort of take the hard steps you know, and sort of step in there and really demand an agreement because I think they feel like they just don't, the economy still feels stable. It feels like it's defied all of these odds and they don't want the a potential railroad strike to be the thing that tips us over into, you know, full-blown recession. Yeah, you know, I, we, when we talk about the railroad strike, we keep talking about like Christmas presents and stuff like that. That stuff is already in the warehouses. Yeah. But right. they're, like you brought up, you know, agriculture, uh, chemicals being moved across the country that are essential, essential for running many of our big cities. Medicine. I mean, th me exactly. Exactly. This, formula. this could be huge. Yeah. Uh, Lori Benjamin. Lori, thank you so much. Thank you.